Hey everyone, welcome to Forked. Today we're building our own ping tool in C. So what is ping? It's a network utility that tests if a host like a server or another computer is reachable. It sends a special message and waits for a pong back. This helps us check network connectivity and measure the round trip time. The magic behind ping is a protocol called ICMP, the Internet Control Message Protocol. It's not for sending user data like web pages or emails, but for control messages about the network itself. Things like error reports. Or in our case, these echo request and echo reply messages. By creating our own ping tool, we'll learn how special ICMP packets are made, how to use raw sockets in C to send them, and how to understand the replies we get back. It's a great way to see how network programming works in real life. Ready to get started? Let's get forked. All right, let's look at the code. First up, our include files. We're pulling in a bunch of standard libraries. STDIO for printing, STDlib for exit, string for memset, unstd for getpd and sleep. The networking magic comes from arpa inet.h, inet.ip, ipicmp, and syssocket. These give us the tools to work with IP addresses, ICMP packets, and sockets. SysTime is for timing our pings, Erno for error checking, and Signal.h for a graceful exit. Next, we have a few constants and global variables. Packet is the size of the ICMP packet we'll be sending. The timeout second is how long we'll wait for a reply. Sock will hold our socket file descriptor. TX count and RX count will keep track of sent and received packets for statistics. And destination address will store the IP address of the host we're pinging. Before we can send an ICMP packet, it needs a checksum. The checksum is a value calculated from the packet's contents that helps the receiver verify if the packet was corrupted during transmission. This function implements the standard internet checksum algorithm. It takes a pointer to the data and the length of the data. It sums up all the 16-bit words in the data, handles any odd byte at the end, and then folds the sum to ensure it's a 16-bit value. Finally, it returns the one's complement of this sum. We'll use this to calculate the checksum for our ICMP packets. Now for a crucial part, initializing our network socket. Since we're crafting ICMP packets, which operate at the IP layer, we need a special kind of socket called a raw socket. In init socket, we call the socket function. AF init specifies the IPv4 internet protocols. Socket raw indicates we want a raw socket. This gives us more control, but also more responsibility. IP proto tells the system we're specifically interested in ICMP packets. Creating raw sockets typically requires root privileges, so the program will print an error if it can't create one. This is a common gotcha. We also set a socket option. This is a receive timeout. If we send a ping and don't get a reply within timeout seconds, which we defined as five seconds, the receive operation will timeout instead of blocking indefinitely. This is important for handling unresponsive hosts. Now that we have a socket, let's prepare the actual ICMP packet we're going to send. This is an echo request packet. The prep packet function takes a buffer, where the packet will be built, and a sequence number. We first memset the buffer to zero it out. Then we cast our buffer to instruct ICMP so we can easily set the ICMP header fields. ICMP type is set to ICMP echo for an echo request. ICMP code is zero for echo requests. ICMP ID is typically set to the process ID. This helps match replies to requests if multiple ping processes are running. We mask it with 0FFFF to ensure it fits in 16 bits. ICMP CQ is the sequence number for this specific packet. We'll increment this for each packet we send. After the ICMP header, we fill the rest of our packet size buffer with some arbitrary data. Here, it's filled with 0x42. Finally, and very importantly, we calculate the checksum using our inCheckSum function. The ICMP checksum field itself must be zero while calculating the checksum. Then we store the result back into ICMP packet to ICMP checksum. We've prepared our packet. The send packet function is straightforward. 
It uses send to descend our prepared packet send buffer through the raw socket sock to the specified destination dest. The receive packet function uses receive from. This function will wait for data to arrive on the socket. It stores the received data in the receive buffer. Crucially, it also fills the from structure with the IP address and port of the sender, so we know who the reply came from. Remember we set a receive timeout on the socket? If no packet arrives within timeout second, receive buffer will return negative one. When receive from gets data on a raw ICMP socket, the receive buffer will actually contain the full IP header of the incoming packet, followed by the ICMP message. This is important for the next step. If receive packet successfully gets some data, we need to process it to see if it's the ICMP echo reply we're looking for. In process reply, we first cast the beginning of receive buffer to a struct IP to access the IP header. The IPHL field in the IP header gives its length in four byte words. So we multiply by four or left shift by two to get the length in bytes. The actual ICMP data starts right after this IP header. So receive buffer plus HLIN points to the ICMP header. We cast this to struct ICMP we then check if ICMP type is ICMP echo reply and if the ICMP ID matches our process ID. This ensures it's a reply to our ping. If it's a valid reply, we increment Rx count. We calculate the round trip time using the start and end timestamps taken just before sending and just after receiving. Finally, we print out the details, the number of bytes in the ICMP part of the packet, the source IP address, from the from structure filled by receive from, the ICMP sequence number from the reply, the TTL from the IP header, and the calculated RTT. When we're done pinging, or if the user presses Control plus C, we want our program to exit gracefully and print some statistics. That's what the cleanup function is for. This function is designed to be a signal handler. When it's called, it first prints out the ping statistics for the destination host. It calculates packet loss based on TX count and RX count. Then it closes our raw socket if it was opened and exits the program. This ensures we don't leave sockets open and we give the user a nice summary. This is where everything comes together. The main ping loop. The ping loop function orchestrates the continuous sending and receiving of pings. It declares buffers for sending and receiving. Note, receive buffer is larger to accommodate the IP header it enters an infinite while loop. This loop will be broken by the user pressing control plus C, which triggers our cleanup function. Inside the loop, prep packet is called to build the ICMP echo request. We use TX count as the sequence number and then increment TX count. Get time of day records the current time just before sending. Send packet sends our crafted packet. If it fails, we sleep and continue to the next iteration, Receive packet attempts to get a reply. Get time of day records the time immediately after receive packet returns, whether it got data or timed out. If receive packet returns a positive value, bytes received, we call process reply to decode it and print the results. Finally, sleep pauses for one second before the loop repeats, sending the next ping. And finally, the main function, the entry point of our program. In main, we check if the user provided exactly one argument, the destination hostname or IP. Anet Python is used to convert the command line argument from a string into a binary network address format, storing it in our global destination address. This version expects an IP address directly, and a full ping utility would include DNS resolution. Signal sets up our cleanup function to be called if the user presses control plus C, in its socket initializes our raw socket. We then set up a struct socket address and called destination socket address. This structure is what send needs to know where to send the packet. We populate it with AF INET and the destination address we got from INET Python. We print an initial message, similar to what the standard ping does, showing the target IP and the size of the data payload in our ICMP packets. Finally, Ping loop is called to start the actual pinging process. Now, let's compile and run it. Since we're dealing with raw sockets, we'll likely need sudo to run the compiled program. There we go, no errors. Now, let's try pinging a local address or a known host like Google's DNS server. Remember, 
because we need to create raw sockets, we need to run this with sudo. And there it is. Our custom ping utility is sending ICMP echo requests and receiving replies. We can see the sequence numbers, TTL, and round trip times. And when I press Ctrl plus C, we get our summary statistics. Pretty cool, right? I hope you found this interesting and learned something new. You can find the complete code on my GitHub profile. Feel free to experiment with it. Maybe try adding features like DNS lookup or handling other ICMP message types. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more coding projects, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to Forked, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see built next. Thanks for watching.